Okay, hey guys. Uh, today I want to talk about hub drives versus mid drives. This is the second video I've done on this. Actually, I've probably, in a weird way, all my videos are about this, but this one is going to be pointedly about which system is better for you, hub drives or mid drive system. I made a video a while ago about why I like mid drives. I, I was getting asked it all the time. So what I usually do is when I get asked the same question over and over again, I just make a video about it. Personally, I didn't like hub motors, so I, I prefer mid drives. So I just made a video about why I, why I like mid drives. That being said, enough time has passed and I think a lot of people took that video and bought systems that they shouldn't have. So this is a video that I wanna just help you decide which system is best for you. If you're new to this channel, I'm Johnny Nerdout. I professionally, full-time, my only job that I do is build custom-made e-bikes and I repair e-bikes, all brands, all everything. Been doing it since 2017. And if you have uh, further questions on this, I do consultations on johnnynerdout.com. If you have questions about like, ah, I wanna, either I wanna build this or I don't know where to go, book a consultation with me. It starts at 10 bucks for 10 minutes. I could usually probably save you at least $100 on your next buy of whether you're buying components or you're buying a bike. Um, I would say on average, I save people at least $100 to $300 on just saying, no, don't, don't do this. This is what you do. Don't order parts that you don't need and then end up returning it. Or like if you're like me, when I first started, I bought all these parts and I still have them, that they're just sitting in the garage um, that I'll never put on a bike. <laughs> So if you're if you're curious about that, go to johnnynerdout.com. I also sell all custom e-bike parts, components, um, all that stuff. And if you have further questions, I love to help people. This is what I do. I talk all day on the phone to people, and I love doing it. But here we go. This is going to be a general overview on which motor system is right for you. Hub drives and mid drives are they're different systems. They both, they both get the same result. They both move you or add to making your bicycle move a lot faster, but they do it in two different, totally different ways. A hub motor generally is just a fixed, it's a fixed gear reduction in there, in your wheel. It's built into your wheel and you get a fixed gear ratio and it helps you that way. Mid drive has that same fixed gear reduction but it's up front in your front cranks. So you take out your front chain ring and you put that in, and now it sends that power through the chain to your rear cassette with all those different gears in there. So you're multiplying th that power to the rear. So you're getting what's called power multiplication, which is good and bad. It's, it's an advanced system. And so this is where we get in trouble, where people are we're buying mid drives because I told them that it's, it's just a way better system but maybe they shouldn't, they should have been buying hub motor systems because a hub motor may have been better suited for them. So I wanna give just a, just a general overview, just enough to make some of you guys mad that I'm being too overview, and then I'll go into, into the weeds. I think that's gonna be the best way to handle this. If you're a cyclist, say if you do, if you do at least a thousand miles a year on your bicycle and just a traditional bicycle, I would recommend going with a mid drive because if you do at least a thousand miles a year on just a standard bicycle, it shows to me that you really like your bicycle, you're confident, you probably know how to shift gears, you understand how to start off in a low gear, how to shift properly, how to go up, and then how to go back down when you come to a stop. You know which brake is which, you just, you're probably confident on a bike. I would say get a mid drive because a mid drive is going to add to that natural feeling. It's gonna, it's just gonna be a better performance uh, motor system. Now, if you are somebody who maybe hasn't ridden a bike in 30, 40 years or ever, and maybe you you don't live in a you live in a place where there's no hills. I'm I'm picturing Florida here. Maybe you live in a retirement village in Florida. You haven't rid, rid in a really long time, or if ever, you know your mobility is starting to go down. But you want to get out there. You want to start keeping your joints moving a little bit. I would say a hub motors for you. A hub motor is going to be easier to use you don't have to there's less things to keep track of it's kind of like driving a stick shift versus an automatic if you get the same car in a automatic and the same car in a manual um, and this analogy doesn't totally work because now they've got that dual clutch automatics that are arguably better than the, the uh, manuals but let's say we're in 1980 
and you got an automatic and a stick. A stick is just gonna perform better than the automatic. Same thing with this. So th th those are the two general camps. Kind of the purest, the really, if you're into biking, get a mid-drive. If you're not, you just want something simple, you're almost, you're thinking about maybe getting a wheelchair, but you're like, I wanna still stay active, get a hub motor. Those are two very general overviews. Now I'd like to get a little bit more in the weeds, I guess. Mid drives, this is why if you're not familiar with, with mid drives or with a bicycle, you should avoid a mid drive because you can go through your drivetrain. You could, you could break chains a lot if you're not in the correct gear all the time. Um, you're gonna put a lot more strain on your drivetrain if you're not riding it correctly. I personally, I ride a mid-drive. I've driven one for the last probably 10, 15,000 miles. I think I've gone through about maybe two or three chains and those were my fault. I was in the wrong gear and I was giving it all she had up a, like a 20% grade and the chain just went, I can't take this anymore. So that was my fault. But if you ride it normally, you should not be having chain issues with that. And then I wanna talk about aesthetics. This is kind of, in my opinion, it's a pick your poison. Mid drives do stick out a little bit more. There's a, there's a bulge that's underneath the bottom bracket. And depending on your frame geometry, it could stick out below your frame. And that could become like, it could ruin your clearance. Some, some frames have a very aggressive geometry where it goes vertical very quick and the motor's able to kind of swing up and it's really a non-issue. Some people like that the way that it looks, some people don't. And then with, with hub motors, you know, you either like having that big motor and they come in different sizes. Sometimes the direct drive ones are flat and like a pancake and the geared ones are generally smaller. And the geared hub motors are generally gonna give you more torque because they have a gear reduction in there, which is, it's still, it's, it's not as good as a mid drive as far as hill climbing and the low end torque, but it is much better than a direct drive. And just so we're, just so we're aware guys, I'm talking about street legal uh, motors here, 750 watts or less, just so that we're on the same playing field. Once you get above, you know, 1,000 watts, 15, 2,000, 3,000 watts, everything starts, it, it, everything changes. So what I'm talking about now is 750 watts or less. Next thing I wanna talk about is maintenance. Both of them really should not require much maintenance at all. You might wanna re-grease the gears in there every, I, I like to say it's like an oil change. You know, do it like the, after like the first 600 miles maybe. You don't have to, but if you really wanna be anal about it, we're, change your grease after about the first 600 miles. And then after that, it's like maybe every three to 5,000 miles. Again, you don't have to do it at all, but if you really wanna stay on it and make the thing last forever, that's what I would do. Besides that, if you ever get a flat tire, here's, here's the thing where I would say mid drives have the, the advantage on this. If you ever get a flat tire on a rear hub motor, it's a major pain to, to fix that flat tire it's heavy, you're adding about 15 pounds to that, so you're gonna need a dedicated workstation uh, for it to replace it easily. You could definitely do it, you could, I've done it on the side of the road and cursed myself, it's not fun. And the other bad thing is a lot of bike shops will not work on hub motors because of the way that the power cable goes, it runs from the controller to that motor. And a lot of times if you disconnect that, and you do it wrong, and you, you could pull pins out, you could break pins. Sometimes there isn't even a disconnect. Uh, if you buy a cheap hub motor kit off of Amazon or something, a lot of times they don't have one. Uh, and so bike shops just flat out won't work on it. I, I know I've worked at four or five e-bike shops now, and I've seen it happen. I've seen technicians changing a tire, unplugging it, plugging it back in, hey, it doesn't work anymore. What, and now all of a sudden the bike shop is on the hook to replace either the motor, the controller, wherever the brake was. And it's not worth, it's not worth it for the bike shop to make 30 bucks on a flat tire uh, change at the risk of having to spend three to $500 on a motor or controller repair, plus all that labor. So a lot of bike shops will not work on e-bikes, especially hub bikes. With a mid-drive, it's essentially just a normal bike. You're not doing major surgery to it. You're switching out the cranks, but everything else from the chain to every, it's just a normal bike. So that's why I like it because I feel like a bike shop, any bike shop worth their weight and salt should be able to work on it because it's a standard bike. For the most part, it's 99% a standard bike except for that motor in the bottom bracket. I would give the benefits to mid drives there. Um, next, I wanna talk about reliability. This one, I, I probably would actually give 
um, a slight advantage to hub motors, depending, and this is using apples to apples comparison on quality. Like if I were doing a cross country from coast to coast ride, I, I could definitely see the benefit in using a hub motor because you know if you were to break your chain or something like that, you're not reliant on that chain to bring power from there to there and it's all in the hub. So you could still go even if you break a chain. Again, it's very unlikely and chains are very cheap. You could get an eight speed chain for 12 bucks. Um, I sell them for 12 bucks on my website. But again, I will give it a slight advantage just for that fact that if you ever did break a chain on your mid drive, you know, you're, you're kind of a sitting duck unless you have a, an extra chain or just even like those master links, a spare of extra master links, which are like a dollar or two. Most of the time, just those little master links are all you need to, to fix a broken chain. Performance at the 750 watt uh, limit, a mid drive is hands down a better performer. You're gonna, if you were to ride on one side by side, you would be like, whoa, this is night and day. A mid drive is going to really outperform a hub motor, especially on hill climbing, because you're able to use your gears in the back and really dial in where you wanna select that power. You're pinpointing which gear ratio you wanna be in. With a, a gear, with a, a geared hub motor, you're stuck in that. You could add power to it with using your human power, but you know, at max, you're probably at like 300 watts if you're standing on the pedals and you're really giving it. Whereas, you know, a hub motor is just dialing in. It's gonna be able to climb way better and across the entire spectrum. Although, you're gonna have to shift it into gear. It's like a car. If you were to put it in first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, you're pinpointing that power of that little motor in your car. I don't know why in my head I'm picturing like a little tiny Honda Civic or something from 1989 with like 100 horsepower. But with that, it, it's just gonna be way more, it's gonna perform way better when you're able to put it in the gear you need. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Ease of riding, I'll definitely give this to hub motors. And that's why if you are, you know, just getting back into biking, hub motors are definitely the way that you, sh you, you might wanna be looking. Um, and this applies whether you're building your own bike or buying a pre-made bike. Because hub motors, a lot of times, especially if they have a throttle, you just gas it and go. It doesn't matter which gear you're in. You don't have to be in the correct gear. You could be in the highest gear and your pedals are barely moving, but you're still gonna just scoot along. It's essentially like a scooter and a mid-drive is like a motorcycle where you got those gears. It's gonna perform way more, but you've gotta be more conscious on gear selection. Otherwise, you're gonna burn up your motor. You're gonna break a chain. Same thing with like a motorcycle. If you were just in fifth gear all the time, even at red lights and taking off, you'd have to rev that thing crazy high to, to take off. Um, so if you want ease of riding, you know, if you're buying somebody a bike and they're not, you know, maybe it's your grandmother who never rode a bike ever. She's from the old country. Uh, you want to just get her a hub, hub motor for sure. Uh, a mid drive might be a little bit too much for her. She's going to be worried about what gear she's in and all that. And I don't mean to just be gender. I mean, men as well are just equally as, as able to not know how to ride a bike. And now let's go to cost. So with pre-made bikes, I have a whole nother video up on why mid drives cost more than uh, hub motors, but for the aftermarket DIY custom build market, for the same comparison, they're gonna be about the same price. They both are gonna start at about four to $450 for a quality kit. Now you could go on Amazon and you could probably buy a kit for a little over 200 bucks. Do I recommend doing that? No, absolutely not. Because there's a saying called, you get what you pay for. And I've definitely had to learn that lesson the hard way many times in my life. Uh, I'm not a young pup anymore, so I've definitely learned that a few times. But if you're a young pup, I go ahead and touch that stove to see how hot it is. But I do not recommend buying uh, the cheapest kit on Amazon. In fact, I don't recommend buying any e-bike kit on Amazon because you're not gonna get any support from that seller. I recommend buying from places like me. I know I'm doing shameless uh, promoting myself here, but I have a video up on where to buy stuff from. Buy it from an e-bike specific shop because they're gonna be able to give you support. If you're having trouble doing installation, they're gonna be able to walk you through what the problem is, blah, 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 blah. If you buy from somebody on Amazon, first of all, you hurt places like me, so when you actually do need help and you call places like me, we're not gonna be around. That's a whole nother topic for another day. But they're not gonna be able to support you because a lot of those stores are located in China and they're not uh, e-bike enthusiasts. There is gonna be a very, trust me, this is another touching those stove type moments where I would not recommend buying a, a kit off of Amazon. 
especially a cheap one. So that's generally the main difference between hub motors and mid drives. Um, if you're into performance and you're, you're confident on a bike, go mid drive. It's gonna feel different. Your center of gravity is in a more, much more ideal location, center and low, where with a, a hub motor, it's low and in, inside your wheel. It's unsprung weight is what they call it. But if you're not really into bikes, you, you won't notice it and it's not gonna be a big deal. So if, if you're not really, if you've never ridden any bike or you know, you're not into bikes, don't worry too much about this stuff. I'd probably recommend going with a hub motor and then maybe in a year or two, you get really confident on it. Then consider listing it on Craigslist or Marketplace and then upgrading to a mid drive and then really kind of reap the benefits of the advanced system that a mid drive is. Um, and then as far as, you know, buying a pre-made or custom building your own, that's, there's a whole nother topic on that. You know, if you really are big into aesthetics, probably a pre-made bike, but not all the time. A lot of times my bikes that I build for customers, I would argue look better than a lot of pre-made bikes. But a lot of people just want to, you know, click and buy and have it shipped to their house. And there's a value in that as well. So definitely think about that. Maybe buying a pre-made bike. And guys, this is just a very general overview video. Uh, hopefully this video helped you guys figure out which camp you're in. And at the end of the day, there's no right or wrong. It's just which one fits better for you. Because yeah, at the end of the day, an e-bike is still getting one less car off the road. You're still getting more exercise. You're moving those joints. An e-bike is awesome. No matter what, um, you have a, a hub or a mid, whatever. So it, it's awesome at the end of the day. And I encourage you to get on one and get on one that's of better quality than of bad quality. A lot of people say, oh, I rid one and it sucked. Like you probably didn't ride a good one then. Spend like one to 200 more dollars, get good components, and it, it'll be, be a world of difference. If you're already gonna be spending seven, $800 at least for an e-bike, spend one or $200 more. Save up one or, one or two more paychecks, just wait another month, Get one that's way better that, that you're gonna have for three or four years at least, maybe 10 years. So that's my opinion on that, guys. Uh, if you found this helpful, check out my other videos. If you have suggestions for other videos, if you're like, how do you do this? Or what do you think about this? I'll leave comments below. I love helping you guys. I love this community. This is probably one of the biggest growing communities there is. I love to be a part of it. And all right, enough rambling. Later, guys.